والله اطلب من النساء الامريكيات يعني رساله اوجهها لهم انه يطالبون اولادهم واخوانهم اللي هسه موجودين بالعراق انه يرجعون لبلادهم ويرجعون لديارهم لانه حتى لا تشوه الصوره اكثر لانه بدت تشوه مع الاسف الشديد. يعني الاسلام يعني مو شرط يعني يكون عندك اسلام يعني يكون عندك اسلام يعني أشكر الشعب آني اللي هم قسم من عندهم مو قوي العراقيين والجيش هم شكرا أنا أقول له إنه بسرعة يغادر الوطن إنه قل عنا صدام من الحكومات. إحنا كل الزين ندري ما جايين على صدام جايين على نفط بس كده كان يقدرون يأخذون النفط بأسلوب غير الأسلوب اللي دمر البلد. between the economic reasons why men went to war and why women had to cross borders. Trying to stop this war, we decided the most subversive thing we could do would be to communicate directly to the women of Iraq. We have a letter that thousands of people around the country have signed which we are sending to the women of Iraq. As women, mothers, daughters, grandmothers, aunts, and sisters, we are reaching out to you offering our friendship, support, and strength. You are not alone in the struggle for peace and justice. We pledge to do everything in our power to prevent further suffering for you, your children, and all of the Iraqi people. We call on women everywhere to join in nonviolent action to end the current military operations and stop future attacks. Diplomacy, yes. War, no. War will not bring anything to this world. Of course, Mr. Kim Jong-il is not my type. Of course, Ms. Saddam Hussein is not my type. But Mr. Bush, he is, you are not my type either. Yeah. We may be small, we may be young. We won't stop till peace is done. Maybe small, we may be young. We won't stop till peace is done. Thousands of feet below you, there is a small boy running from your bombs. If he were to show up at your mother's house on a green sea island off the coast of Georgia, he'd be invited in for dinner. Now, driven, you have shattered his bones. He lies steaming in the desert in 50 or 60 or maybe 100 oily, slimy bits. If you survive and return to your island home and your mother's gracious table, where the cup of loving kindness overflows the brim and from which no one in memory was ever turned away, gather yourself, gather yourself, and set a place for him. The political formula set forward by the U.S. occupation is a very tragic one. What is called the Governing Council in Iraq has set the dividing lines between the people of Iraq upon ethnicities, 
upon religion, upon gender. Of course, uh, speaking about gender is the biggest misery of all because in this governing council out of 25 seats, only three women got seats. One of them is a previous path symbol and two of them are women under veil. What does this, what is the message that is set forward for women in Iraq? Is that this submissive woman, this is the role that we should expect for our future in there. <laughs> هي أهم شيء الحرية والديمقراطية بصدق مو مجرد كلام. This was her. Yeah. And she's wearing kind of a a mini skirt. Yeah. Tell her she was very beautiful. Mini. 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 مشيتهم أو ثقافتهم أو شون عيشتهم بال شون يعني شنو هم غايتهم يعني مثلا هم مدار العلمانيين كذا وشنو يعني. يعني والله متحررة يعني أفكار أهم شيء أهم شيء الأمان في حال إذا توفر حيكون وعي أكثر يعني الثقافات تتغير الحياة بالنسبة للبنية يعني تكون شوية يعني نسبة انفتاح يعني متعادلة إذا كانت هي طبعا من النوع اللي يتحمل مسؤولية الدين فتقدر يعني وازن بين الحياة المتطورة والحياة الدينية المتعصبة. منا حد ورد وانا سيد. وصور. جاي غير عمل صدام بيه. ايه. اوكي. ايه. Can she start off by telling me what she thinks of the CPA? نبدأ بسؤال أنا شو رأيك بال بالسلطة الاعتلاف قوات الأمريكية يعني في العراق؟ والله قوات الأمريكية ما ريتها تبقى هنا. أولا أمريكا أمريكا من جت تحررتنا على أساس التحرير تحرر وترجع ما ريتها تبقى هنا. إيه هذا نريد نريد أمريكا بأسرع وقت تطلع من عد قبل الإهانة وقبل لا يصير ترى بيا مو خوش. This morning, I woke up and thought about how the people in Iraq must be feeling right now with the absolute certainty that their lives are going to be short, with the absolute certainty that everything they know and care about will be destroyed. And how, how could I get through the day knowing that this was being done in my, my name? name. Where do I go to find? I am fasting because words alone are not enough to express my deep opposition to this unconscionable plan to invade Iraq. It is not acceptable to me that this action be taken in my name or the names of other American women and our families, especially women of color, who know what it means for our lives to be considered Worthless. As human beings, we're supposed to treat others as we would want to be treated. Sit down and, and consider, would, would you want this to happen to your own children? If you're a mother, if you're a grandmother, if you, if you have you know, sisters and brothers, would you want your family to be treated like this? And, and, and I think that the answer would come very quickly and very clearly that, that no, the, the poor children and, and women in Iraq didn't do anything to, to the United States to deserve this. Awaken to your power. We decided that we did want to work as women and that uh, daddy got us into this and we're going to have to get ourselves out of it. Awaken to your power. Well, I think it's a very um, sort of profound and important way to make a statement that is not just verbal, that speaks to people's souls. Well, when you ask me you know, why I think 
our leaders are taking us to war, it's interesting that I can't immediately come up with a good answer. Any time that someone says we don't have a choice, I start not to trust them. I am fasting to express my opposition to the U.S. waging war in Iraq that this opposition spreads across the nation. When I waked up this morning, I remembered hearing that a rare sight of Venus was to be visible in the... But when I came and looked at the window, I could only see Mars, not Venus. I was disappointed, but when I thought about it, it seemed a, a little metaphor about how the consciousness of this looming war takes up so much of my attention these days and weighs down my spirit since 9-11. Having a quiet time here to feel connected to other women concerned about peace. There were those who didn't care about praying, the young ones, the ones who had been to America. They told the old ones, you are wasting your time. Time? The old ones prayed for the young ones. They prayed for Allah to mend their brains. One of the women in the book wrote an alphabet of words, and the last word was zest. And I don't want to forget جو اول مره هنا الصبح اجوا هنا افتروا بكل المنطقه وراح جابوا الدرع هنا تقدموا علينا ذاك العتاد مكون بكت مدرعات اثنين يعني ضربوا عليه بس بكت بكت وقاذفه اي سلام يا سيدي بعدكم هنا عايشين لو اي لا والله عايشين هنا ما عندنا مكان غيره وين نروح ورا ما اخذوا الولد قمنا نشتغل بالكرك كنا ما نعرف نشتغل بالكرك قمنا نشتغل بالكرك ونسقي ونفلح يعني كنا كل شيء ما نعرف كنا نوزلهم كل شيء ما نشتغل Look at Iraq for the last year so many explosions so many people are killed innocent people civilians and so many places are targeted so many explosions uh, just in the last two days, four or five explosions in Baghdad and uh, in other places of Iraq. And um, for the last 11 months, 12 months, um, a year, many, many explosions. Where, where is the security? Women cannot go out alone, um, uh, especially in the afternoon and at night. Uh, even in fact, even in the morning, I, I hear many stories about uh, women who work, for example, teachers or employees who are being kidnapped when they go to their work, who are being shot, dead, um, who are being uh, uh, abused. So for women, no, the security situation is really bad, and all, not only all, uh, for women, for all the people. Human Rights Watch put a very long report on this issue, and they worked on uh, more than 70 cases, but they documented 28 cases in that report. I mean, you can hear about women you know, at least three cases, women I know, who were uh, raped. One of them was over 50 years old. But why this happened, I mean, there are many, there could be many reasons. But I think the, 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 the main reason was that the absence of authority, the absence of security. Many of you may know that uh, women in Iraq lived much better conditions than other women in that area, in the Middle East. We were much better off when it came to access to education, access to work, and uh, also in, uh, in rights, and that had a reason for it. The progressive movement in Iraq has started early on. By 1958, Almost 45,000 Iraqi women were organized under what's called Women's League, and they did huge demonstrations on the streets and were able to change some of the civil laws. And most of the, those uh, included articles of the law that were based on Islamic Sharia. Can you imagine, oh, more than 50 years ago, there was a strong women's movement in Iraq. 
the goal of this is this negotiation is uh, for the uh, uh, the fair representation for the women in the transitional government. We want uh, the women to take place in uh, this uh, transition government uh, because we don't uh, want only the men uh, take a place for this uh, places. Why should, should the woman uh, be in this uh, position? Because uh, she is able to do everything the man uh, can do. Uh, we, we, we always uh, talk about the democracy. I, 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 I think democracy is not uh, being uh, established uh, when uh, the, the woman is not in this uh, place. Politically, women cannot be oppressed anymore. We need to be everywhere. We need to be on all councils, and our numbers are 60%. We are more than half the society. Nobody can keep us down anymore. We want representation. We want councils that have policies that are friendly for women. We want equality between men and women. Long live equality between men and women in Iraq. Women in Black started in Buffalo in October of 2001, shortly after we started bombing Afghanistan. It came out of a discussion group, one of many here in Buffalo, New York, that uh, were holding meetings about September 11th, 2001. It's a model that we borrowed from women in Israel, who started a women in black group in 1988 in response to their government's policies, particularly concerning the Jewish settlement and failure to reach peace with the Palestinians. And this is a worldwide organization, not just in Israel. It's a group of women that show up and hold vigil, a silent vigil, for peace. The idea is too many words have been spoken, there's too much rhetoric uh, talking about war and the need for war and even the need for peace. And by our silent presence, they would hold up stop signs, stop the occupation. Uh, here in Buffalo, we adapted that, but a silent vigil for peace and against our U.S. government's policies. People really take to this model and understand its significance and also its simplicity. You come once a week, you stand silently, you stand for peace, you show that dissent is still possible in this democracy. Sacred the land, sacred the water, sacred the sky, holy and true, sacred all life. We pray that these conversions take place in our hearts, in our spirits, and in reality. We pray this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our specific intention for being there, which we had prayed over, which we had discussed for months, was based on the fact that war was imminent, that there were threats made by the president to use weapons of mass destruction on the axis of evil countries. So every time the threat would come out, you know, we, we had studied for years international law. And so we were aware that uh, the international law that has been incorporated into the Constitution of the United States, that this was being defiled. So we knew that we had to go and stop a crime. We looked at it as a, as a form of liturgy, as a form of prayer. And so we wore white Tyvek suits that had disarmament specialists on the front and in big letters CWIT on the back, Citizen Weapons Inspection Teams. And um, we clipped a link in the fence, in the cattle gate fence, clipped a link in the fence around the silo opened that up and put our banner, Sacred Earth and Space Plowshares, on it, poured our cross, our blood on there in the shape of a cross, on the railroad tracks, on the, the sides of the um, missile silo.
God bless. Thank you for being in black. May the Lord too. bless Thank you. you. Thank you so much. It's great seeing what you. Courage. It's great being with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. It seems like I've seen a lot of you in this way, in this journey. Thank you so much. My name is Frida Berrigan. I'm a member of the War Resisters League and part of Ardeth and Carol's Jonah House community. Um, and Ardeth and Carol and Jackie have asked me to introduce them this morning and explain why they and uh, many others of us are, w are dressed in black. As the sisters go into court today to be sentenced by the government uh, for their courageous and legal act of exposing and inspecting U.S. weapons of mass destruction, they are dressed as women in black. Ardeth and Carol and Jackie will wear black and stand silent to be in solidarity with the voiceless millions held hostage by the threat of the Minuteman missile and the mushroom cloud. Our only problem is not just equality. We have much more immediate problems. We don't have jobs, we don't have money. We cannot survive if we go on like this. So we decided to take part in the unemployment movement and uh, we went out marching in the streets and this movement was a big one. It started with thousands, but when I was there, and this is a month ago, the number reached 125,000 people who are who have membership in this organization and who we represented when we went into negotiations with the American officials. We certainly cannot the, trust the media to cover the reality of occupation. We did an amazing job as the anti-war movement. Here in the U.S., we managed to get over 600 organizations to come together under the umbrella of United for Peace and Justice. And around the world, there were simultaneous demonstrations like we had on February 15th that I don't think has ever been seen before in history where millions of people came out on the same day with the same message, a very clear message, the world says no to war. So we tried our best and we succeeded in building a strong movement, we succeeded in forcing the U.S. to go to the United Nations, we succeeded in getting the Security Council not to go along with the United States. There is a big secular base of people, of working class, of women in Iraq who are willing to fight for a better future. The occupying forces are trying to impose a very different reality. And if we are not there, if we do not get your support, it is not possible. hopefully, um, by the lyrics of the, of the cheers, and also um, in a way that's 
um, informative. When I saw people coming out to these protests, you know, in, in bad weather and in small numbers, I just felt that they needed someone, you know, to congratulate them and thank them. It wasn't until we got closer and closer to possibly invading Iraq that, you know, the tens of thousands of people came out. Generally, protests are, um, frankly speaking, really boring. <laughs> They're just really boring. You know, you're just walking, and that's great. People want to be there, obviously. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with being entertained and having fun when you're out there. When there's a group of people who are participating in the rally, they're marching by, and then, you know, maybe they're starting to get a little tired or they're just feeling frustrated about the issues that they're expressing, and then they see the radical cheerleaders who are saying, you know, we're saying like, yay, peacemakers, thanks for being out here. It sort of pumps people up and, and makes them feel good. Hey, Kristen, did you know the occupation has got to go? Do you want more? What? Do you want more? No! Usually we pick a color, say red, white, and blue, or pink and black, or red and black, and then people just go out and find what they can find and try to be creative and fun, and, and you know, you can go to whatever extreme that you want. We remember! We be remember! It was just a year ago! Iraq was bombed the world said no! We're aware! We're here aware! You said the weapons would be found to distract from oil in the ground. We believe, we, we believe, it's time to take a different track. Come on, Bush, bring them back! Come on, Bush, bring them back!